Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, good. You look all rugged off. Is it cold where you are? I am. Oh, yeah, it's been kind of cold. I'm at mum and dad's. I'm kind of in Oh, time. so you're up in the Hunter. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's freezing right. up here. It was like three degrees in Newcastle this morning. So you you recently released um, your first single, which is yeah. The Great Unknown. Congratulations. <laughs> it's amazing. I've Thank been you. listening to it nonstop for the last like fortnight. And I should have heard it earlier, but I was like waiting for the music video to drop instead of just listening to the track. Yeah, I know what you mean. I started writing all of those tunes quite a, quite a while ago, maybe 18 months, two years ago, mm -hmm. and um, had recorded them. I remember it like, I don't know if it was just poor planning or just generally me, but um, I would have booked, I like booked studio time a day or two like after we landed from like a six eight week tour from Europe or mm -hmm. America so I'd just be completely cooked and really frazzled and go straight into a studio for three days straight and get these songs down yeah but I actually feel like that in hindsight wasn't a bad thing because it didn't give me a chance to slow down because if I start to slow down or at least if I give myself a break in the way that like oh you deserve a little rest or whatever yeah. I, nothing gets done yeah right do you tend to like overthink if you've got too much time if you've got too yeah, much time um, in like the studio you rework everything yeah well that too that too but we also like i had demoed a bunch of those songs early with my friend Gus, who ended mm -hmm. up playing on the record and producing it and um you know, I've, I've known Gus since I was 16. We've toured together since we were 17, but we had all that sort of sorted so that we could go into the studio and just tick boxes and make sure. So in that way, there was some planning, but also, um, yeah, I just, I can't be really idle otherwise. I'll, yeah. I make dumb decisions. <laughs> How yeah. was it working with Gus again? And right. I know that um, Thomas did the visuals for your music video again. What was it like um, really, reuniting with Papa Vest Pretty? Really important to me, actually. Um, just, it was just really, it felt like it was, it was a natural thing to do mm. and it felt like slipping into an old pair of comfy boots, mm -hmm. you know? Even though things are remarkably different to the way that we were before, but like, for, for example, I'm writing the songs. That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> You're but, not just, you know, in the background doing all the drumming. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but I, I'd sort of, um, I've always stayed in contact with Tom and Gus and I have toured on lots of other projects mm -hmm. together, like, um, you know, Jack Ribar. We've done a whole bunch of stuff with um, Dean Lewis and stuff like that as well. Um, so I, I really haven't stopped touring with Gus so that, and our friendship is so strong, mm. I guess. And we've always, it's just one of those things that he's got, I've got his back, he's got mine. And that's a, like the actual epitome of that relationship or, or at least, yeah. So it was really good working with Gus because I am quite bombastic in a studio setting or like just in a creative sort of mind i'm kind of like let's do this let's yeah. do this, let's do this let's do that and gus is far more considered and really um you know it gives a lot more thought to what his next move might be whereas i might be like if we try this and something happens it's fucking awesome yeah we've got to keep it yeah whereas he's like let's just think about how this will work so and I think you, I, oh sorry, yeah. no, you keep going. I was just saying, I just think I need someone like that, um, uh, sort of keeping me in check a little bit. Yeah. Because, you know, he's worked with a lot of other singers and um, uh, that kind of thing in studios. Whereas, you know, I've usually my role in recording is come in, get the beds, like the drums done in five days, and then just fucking chill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or so, if I've got to do BVs, I just wait until the end, you know? Yeah. Because you had such a small time in the studio, did you get any chance to experiment on this track or, or any of the others that you've been writing? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was some, not not so much on this track. I demoed this in in the Four Points Sheraton in Perth. Okay. Um, and we were using my friend Alex's guitar, like some of his really nice guitars, and detuning them and doing all that kind of shit. And there was a really, really nice vibe from a bunch of the good guitar parts. So we decided to keep a few of those on the actual recording. Mm -hmm. And and I think that can't really. There's a certain vibe that you get when you're do, when you're demoing something for the first time, and I don't think you can really compete with that a huge amount. Even if you're trying to make it all nice and clean with all the really nice studio gear mm -hmm. and stuff like that, there's a real. I hate to say the word vibe, but there's a vibe. There's a vibe. There's a vibe. It's Marbo. It's, it's, no, but it's, it's true. Awesome. You've got to like feel the music and, and see yeah. where the direction's going. I get it. Fully. But I also, on um, because I've got an EP ready to go. I, I've recorded six That's five That's so songs. exciting. Yeah, it's going to be cool. I've got five songs ready and we definitely experimented on a few of those ones. Having a rough idea of what we wanted to do, but also allowing for creativity a little mm. bit more. And that's kind of me as a person. Like, oh, we've got to do this. This is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. So you mentioned before that you um, were touring with Dean Lewis and Jack River as well. I know that you toured with Kim Churchill and Thelma Plum too over the last two years. Have those artists influenced your like sound as a solo performer? I don't, I don't know if they've fully influenced my sound, but they've definitely influenced the way that I go about writing a song mm. and um, and being confident enough to uh, sort of back myself mm -hmm. to, to do that. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm, you, I'm fairly inspired by all the people who I've who I've worked with because um, I kind of understand, or at least I have a better understanding after. X amount of years doing this of kind of what it takes to just to keep doing it and to keep on producing something that you're something that connects with people and that you have that you've worked on for it's, it's your craft right like they've worked on their craft for years countless years mm -hmm. you know um, and I I've, I've got a newfound respect for all of that I have a really close relationship particularly with Kim He's been a really great soundboard for me, mm -hmm. um, where I, I can call him and be like, oh, I'm going to do this and this, and I might release this. And he's like, fucking, all right, cool. <laughs> How else, what are we going to do about this? Yeah. You know, and then also as well, Kim gave me my first sort of opportunities as far as like a singer songwriter to mm -hmm. support him early in this year, January. And, um, yeah, that just, I learned so much because, you know, I've sort of been out the back and playing drums or mm -hmm. I've been doing lots of BBs around, but it's just so different if you've got a guitar on and you're out the front. Yeah, that but, would have been a wild experience. You're totally changing it up. Yeah, and that's, I need that. I really needed to do yeah. that. And he also saw that it was a good opportunity for me to get in front of those people. And they were quite nice, intimate shows as mm -hmm. well. So. He was doing this um, tour concept called the One Mic, One Light. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, just like the title, One Mic and One Light. <laughs> kind of um, unplugged. Yeah, Slightly, yeah, more yeah. Or less. So it was this less intrusive, less invasive mm -hmm. introduction to, you know, being out the front. That was really, really lovely for me to sort of learn a little bit more. And I did about 15 shows with him. Wow. Doing those ones. So by the end of it, I was like, okay, I'm sort of working now. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling that like confidence a little bit more. Yeah. And then it's kind of like any tour or any sort of when a band's playing really well, you sort of maybe the first one or two shows, you're just like, okay, so that's kind of working well there. That's working mm -hmm. well there. And then you start to really hit your straps, sort of third show, maybe earlier if you're a fucking amazing band, mm -hmm. maybe maybe later. But um, you start to hit your straps, and you can really feel everything around you, and and like it's like everything's in its right place. Yeah, know? and you would have had so many years to perfect that for you sitting at the back behind the drums because you've yeah. been performing since you were a teenager. Right? Yeah. And and that was in like Newcastle and Sydney. So how how did you first 
like start performing? How did, how, what was your introduction into the music industry? I went to school in Sydney for year 11 and 12. I wanted to pursue music um, and sort of being a kid in the Hunter Valley, sometimes your music um, opportunities are a little bit, um, they're few and far between mm -hmm. really. Um, so I made the decision and I talked to my parents who were super rad and super supportive uh, that I wanted to follow pussy music. So I went down and had an audition for a school called McDonald College in North Strathfield and got in. And within the first week of year 11, I had met this guy called Thomas Rawl. And um, we, he was just the most freakishly talented musician I've ever, I've ever seen. No shit. Mm -hmm. And um, then about a week and a half later, he said, oh, my band, I've got this band and we're doing these things for this, it's like a home bake, um, like competition. So the winner of the band gets to play at home bake back in the day. Mm -hmm. See, home bake doesn't even exist anymore, that's how old and long I've been going. <laughs> but um, so basically we did this thing and I learned, he was like, come and, come and play these songs and like, I. I met Gus Gardner in Tom Rawls' shed after school. We were about to do um, the first rehearsal, and then it just it just literally went from there. And Tom's songs, even when he was sixteen, were just really special. Mm -hmm. And then it really went from there. Like a whole series of things went our way. I guess like I was asked to formally join the band, which was pretty cool. <laughs> and then. Um, and then we started playing gigs like two nights a week in Sydney around pubs and clubs and we were 16, 17. So Tom's dad, Neil, used to take us to the gig and have to unload all the gear mm -hmm. and then I'd have to stay outside. We'd all have to stay outside until five minutes before oh. we play. Yeah. But I remember this this Hopetown gig, this home bake thing was like some of the bands on there, you know, in, in three or four years time, that would fill out like an animal theater yeah, or right. an and so like on our on our heats we were playing with the jezebels mm -hmm. um ck deep sea arcade maybe art versus science and pub versus wow Japan. yeah yeah so that was that kind of gives you an indication of the sydney scene at the time that i was uh starting to play around a lot as a really really young boy yeah i guess but Sydney was happening, there were gigs, there were gigs sort of midweek, there were gigs all the time. And that was my introduction. And then we got signed by a, a lovely guy called Mark Holland from EMI and just went from there. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. And then it was around 2013 that Luke joined the band? Yeah, Luke Liang. He was another one of the most freakishly talented musicians I've ever seen, mm -hmm. met, ever talked to. Anything that anything that you put in front of him, him he would he'd master in an hour. Mm -hmm. I'm not even kidding. It was amazing. You could put bagpipes in front of him. <laughs> we the first time we got Luke involved was we were doing an iTunes like an Apple iTunes session, mm -hmm. and we did a recording of a cover, an Elvis Costello song called Veronica. Oh yeah. And yeah 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 yeah. Fun. Yeah. Um, and we needed an extra guitar part in, in that and Luke was a friend of Gus's, uh, they went to school together and he was a friend of Gus's and we'd sort of known Luke and seen him around a few times. Mm -hmm. He actually teched for us, he ran all the guitars, we did a tour with Incubus in uh, 2012 and he did a whole bunch of teching for us mm -hmm. and showed us the best. And then when he ended up playing on that and then from that point on, it was just like, well, this sounds pretty nice with an extra guitar part, just generally. Yeah. And then we started inviting him to rehearsals. And but at that stage, we were pretty deep into the writing phase of the second album. And that's um, White Deer uh, Park, yeah. yeah. Like, like not far away at all. And so then we just started adding Luke's guitar parts and then he's also he also had an incredible voice so he could sing and that was another another instrument in the band mm -hmm. I guess having four people singing is a real benefit and a real, real cool thing to have mm. you know I love bands to sing. 
Mm -hmm. He started, I think his first show was up with us, was at the Metro Theatre, and he just smashed it and just, it was just like, oh, we'll just, do you want to join, <laughs> you know? Well, another formal introduction yeah, for men. Super yeah, formal <laughs> super formal. <laughs> yeah, um, and that was really, really cool. And then from that point on, it was, he was the absolute voice of musical reason mm -hmm. in the band. Mm -hmm. Everything that he did was just so tasty and so well thought out again. It kind of makes you lift your, your own game. If you're playing with all these incredible musicians, you yeah. just kind of think, like, well, shit, I need, to be, I need to be better. Yeah, and he was definitely that person for me. Like, mm -hmm. your game, kind of thing. So did you sort of feel any kind of extra pressure for um, the great unknown? Because I know the, the subject behind it is obviously um, Luke's passing in um, 2018. Uh, obviously it would have been a cathartic process for you writing on tour and everything. Did you feel any sort of extra pressure to um, to have this song as like an homage? Yeah, oh, like I didn't feel that pressure when I was writing it. It was, for, at this point, it was an absolute necessity. Like when I was writing it, it was an absolute necessity, necessity for me to write it mm -hmm. because I was really struggling um, with the passing of Luke. I wrote the song about myself two years in advance, really, which is right about now, because I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Right. And I couldn't see, and I couldn't, and I kind of was under, it was, it's a strange thing to say, but I was understanding and I was, was understanding of Luke's position and, and trying to will myself forward through that which I was just finding really, really difficult. Mm -hmm. And I needed to put my thoughts and consider my thoughts and emotions and put them down. And I also wrote it a bit about Gus as well, um, just because we had been through a lot and that, that doesn't stop now. It only mm. kind of increases. And, but as far as an homage is concerned, I think the pressure came afterwards as in like when I'd finished it all and, and then, then you start asking yourself questions as like, is this appropriate? Mm -hmm. Is this is um, this the first one to release? Is yeah, it, yeah, yeah. With all of that, and then and you know, but at the same time, Luke always told me, or he always said, "Why the fuck aren't you doing your own thing?" Like, <laughs> yeah. Out of all of us, you're the one. You fuck. You should be doing yeah your thing. And if I, and I tried also. I think it was subconsciously, but sometimes when I think about it, and I'm not comparing myself to Luke Leanne in any way, but I think some of the guitar parts, or at least the nice little chimey simple guitar parts, are hopefully a bit of a nod to what he would do. His, his, his whole shtick was being the perfect cog in a wheel, mm -hmm. in turning, in a, in a... In a machine, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and if one of those cogs doesn't work, the machine sucks, mm -hmm. right? I just think that is just the most beautiful sort of way to think about your role within a band or within or whatever you apply yourself to. Like, don't let yourself down, but don't let anyone else down. Mm -hmm. right? I think I just put a lot more pressure on myself after it was all done to whether or not you call it an homage or mm -hmm. anything like that. It's just, it's just me. It's just me trying to put my thoughts on paper. Mm -hmm. It's a bit the cat sat on the mat, yeah. but that, that's okay. You know, I hadn't really thought about writing a huge amount of songs until until all of this happened, mm. and I just needed to focus my energy in on something. And um, and I felt it was honestly I don't like the whole felt the calling kind of thing, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know what else I would have done in that situation. I'm glad that I did do something about it and wrote a bunch of these songs and it really helped me. And sharing them is kind of part of kind of part of the process as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I can't really be too hard on myself with all the pressure and all that kind of shit. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. like part of the process is sharing them and talking about the experiences instead of worrying if it's good enough, mm -hmm. you know? Mm. Once it's out, you can't really do much else about it, so just deal with it. Yeah, now it's just the EP. 
the rest of the year than the rest of the EP. Yeah, shit. <laughs> yeah. So I have to ask though, I've got a few like burning questions. One of them is, um, what's the significance of the fox in the music uh -huh. video? Because it seems so left of field for me coming from someone who's so ingrained in the Australian music scene that the, yeah. the fox was the imagery and I, I can't piece it together. Yeah. Do you know what? The narrative for this for the video changed a lot. I think like we had four or five different ideas, like four or five different times of the week. Mm -hmm. um, and we were sort of Tom was sort of working on this 3D animation software where like um, you know, there was amazing, uh, all these landscapes and he was bringing out, he was able to like sort of 3D animate um, animals. And mm -hmm. The idea, I wanted a hero in, in, the, in the video. Mm -hmm. And originally as well, it was gonna be like a little stick figure man who was um, sort of collecting fireflies, which is like little jars of light so that he can release it a bit later on and out into the world. Mm -hmm. And so, but we sort of kept on moving and kept on involving that kind of um, storyline. And it's kind of like this, this curious little fox, essentially, that it, like sees the light at the end of that tunnel. And instead of running away from the light, is running towards it. Because that's, that's kind of the way that I wanted it to be. It, it's like a, just a visual representation of running towards something that's going to help you, mm -hmm. you know? Um, whether or not, you don't know if it's going to be a good thing or, or whatever, and you, but you have to look at it, and you have to see, you have to acknowledge that it's there and you have to go and check it out kind of thing. And it's quite a long process to get from A to B as in like, you know, fox sleeping on the floor to walking and running into the light, that kind of thing. And I kind of wanted to show the journey between that as well sort of like, you know, me writing this song and then sort of releasing it a year and a half, two years later, there's a huge amount of shit that goes in between that, mm. you know? I don't know if that really answers a burning question about a fox, but... Oh, <laughs> no, definitely. Like, it's a, a kind of symbolic of you. And your hair's slightly red, so it kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works. It's a bit strawberry blonde. It's a bit strawberry yeah. blonde, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the other one was, do we know... When the EP is going to come out, or are you going to release another single? Or it was really good to start the process, I think. But right now, I, I think I'd really like to um, just let people, you know, or at least let the industry and the people who are consuming music just get, get their head around what's happening. And then also, I'd love the opportunity to be able to go out and play shows to support these single releases, which I just can't really do right now. And I just think that's a really integral part of a campaign. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd love to be able to get in front of two or 300 people each week to to tell them why I wrote these songs yeah. and to sing them for people. And I think that would really help. So until I can do that, I'll, I'll probably hold off. What I do have next, coming out next week is a live version that I recorded of The Great Unknown. Um, so with Jen, my lovely partner Jen, and Gus and Alex Benson, who also played guitar. So we did that in a, in a studio and we filmed it all live. And I just think that's a nice sort of, instead of me being able to play live or, you know, it's kind of the first time that a lot of people will see me do anything on live. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of an important part of the story as well. So. I'm happy just to like share that and see how that goes and, you know, at least introduce people, introduce myself to people in that way. It's just a better way for me to get my point across instead of, you know, so they can actually see me yeah. playing. But yeah, I think EP next year, like it's ready to go, um, but all the artwork and everything ready to roll, it's just, you know. It's just 2020 is not, it's not the year for anyone, is it? <laughs> No, it's really hard. How are you going? <laughs> I'm doing fine. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's brutal, but hey, it's the new normal right now. We need to like sort of get 
we need to be adaptable. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if, if anyone wants to listen to The Great Unknown, where can they find it and where can we find the, the um, live version that's going to go up next week? Yeah, so you can, I'm on all the streaming places, just Tom Myers, The Great Unknown, so Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes. SoundCloud? SoundCloud, maybe. <laughs> I don't even know if I put it up there. Uh, I, don't know I, should do. I mean, you know, you're a new solo performer, so it's it's a must be. It. A must must do. <laughs> I should definitely do it. Yeah, uh, you can listen to it on Unearthed on Triple J as well. Um, and next week, I think I'm not sure what day we'll do it, but we'll put up the live version. It'll go up on my social media first and then there'll also be an upload onto a YouTube channel as well. Um, yeah, who knows what day that'll come out next week. But well, I'll be we'll looking work. forward to it. I'll keep an eye yeah, out every single day. I'll check yeah. <laughs> check all the socials. It's going to be really cool. I, I can't wait for people to hear it because it is like the first introduction of it means so yeah. a yeah. bunch of people. And, um, it's not a lyric video and it's not a music video, it's, it's you as you are yeah. with with all the amazing people that support you. So it's exactly. um, yeah. I felt totally comfortable doing that because I had the three of my closest and most accomplished musicians I know like with me. Mm -hmm. And you're only as good as the people around you sometimes. And like I felt so comfortable and it was just you know what it was? It was like a really lovely musical catch up. You know, yeah. it was classic like, jam, but without the improv. Yeah, yeah, it was just, it was just, it was really chill. Yeah, everyone was throwing really good ideas around, and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was just really, it was cool. So I can't wait to show people that. And Jen and I, we were, we, we sing a lot at home, and nice to sort of share that with. The, uh, yeah, the because you've community. supported her um, and, and Ballpark in tours before. I, I saw yep. um, you guys in like 2014, I think it was, with Puffer Best That's Pretty me, supporting yeah. Ballpark. Oh, I was yeah. there on the day you guys met. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, um, yeah, and then it's, it's sort of sort of been all wrapped up since, since then, yeah. to be honest. because the, the, I haven't seen anything um, from just the two of you either, unless you've done stuff live. That, I, yeah. that I've totally missed. So that will be that will be really cool. It's nice to hear us. I, like even I like hearing us. Sing. That's good. Well, that's good. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really nice because we always sing at home. And, like we we always harmonise with each other all around the house and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And maybe that's something that's a little bit special for us too. But you know, it's nice to um, it's nice to kind of share that because it's. It's a huge part of our lives, it's just getting around with each other and yeah. being as musical as possible. And, and you would be a massive influence on each other's music as well. Huge. Yeah. Huge. Jen's, Jen's, my, Jen's my girl, you know. Yeah. I thought I heard some of those um, ballpark harmonies in some of the lines on The Great Unknown, but yeah, it also nah. kind of screamed out the Whitlam's to me. The, mm. the line, um, uh, flowers bloom, the, yeah. the note on flowers, oh, I just, it like, I almost cried. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Um, everyone thinks that was Jen. Uh, that was, it's, 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 I've had so many people come up to me and be like, Jen's singing on the record. And I was like, uh, No, it just sounds like that. Yeah, like, I listened yeah. to it a few times and I was like, no, I'm pretty sure this is, this is all Tom. I was, yeah, I was wearing particularly tight pants. <laughs> 